continue our study, A Guide to Knowing Why You Believe, Apologetics 101. And uh, tonight's uh, message, you'll notice that we're building a case. Each message, each lesson adds to the previous ones. And this is really the case with our discussion tonight. But just by way of reminder, what we're talking about when we say apologetics, I know I've had conversations with several here at Abbott's Creek that they have learned what apologetics is. It doesn't mean we're apologizing for anything, but it's the branch of Christian theology that deals with presenting a rational basis for the Christian faith or the question, why do you believe? Why do you believe? And apologetics is answering, here's why I believe. We have talked about this in introducing apologetics last week, and you can probably see on our Facebook page in the archive, we talked about why I believe in God. Tonight we are going to talk about why I believe in truth, or you might say, why I believe truth is knowable. But let me remind you of our scripture passage where we get the word apologetics from. This is the scriptural basis for this study, for this activity, for this exercise. It is 1 Peter 3.15. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. That phrase, make a defense, is where we get the word apologetics. But this chart on the origin of belief, why do you believe whatever it is you believe? Okay? Now, there are different types of belief. We are talking about those important types of belief. Not why you believe the color red is better than the color green. We're not talking about that. We're talking about those beliefs that impact the way you live your life. And there are many origins for the beliefs that we have. I'm not going to go into detail on this chart. It's just up there for your own uh, benefit. But there are sociological reasons. There are psychological reasons. There are religious reasons. And there are philosophical reasons. And I'm not saying that any one reason is better or worse than the other. The reality is... For most of us, the things that we believe, they take from each one of these areas. And that's really what I want to communicate. I, we're not saying when we do apologetics that this is the only reason to believe in the Christian faith. But what I do want to say at the beginning is this. The primary reason that you should believe the Christian faith is because it is true. If it's not true, then there's no reason to believe it. Now, you may want to take your children away from the screen if they're around or tell them to plug their ears and maybe you don't care in your home. But a little child believes that Santa Claus exists. That's not an evil belief, but it's not a true belief. And too many times we tend to love belief in God, belief in the Christian faith, in the same basket as belief in Santa Claus. Or maybe you believe in the Christian faith because of what it does for you. Well, that's fine. The Christian faith, it does have benefits. But even if it didn't have any benefits in our life here and now, it might still be, and I would argue, is true. So that's what we're talking about tonight. Truth. How do we know why I believe truth is knowable. Now in John 14, 6 and in John 17, 17, Jesus makes two declarations. In John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So there Jesus associates truth with himself. And then in John 17, 17, he says, sanctify them in the truth, your word is truth. And that verse, Lord Jesus, connects truth with Scripture. So, it's vitally important for you and I 
to know why truth is knowable and to, I know this might sound strange to many of you that are tuning in tonight, to know why truth is true. Now your head may be about to split, and you may think that this discussion is a given, that who out there doesn't think truth is true or that truth isn't knowable? Well, as we look into this, you're going to see very quickly that in our world, to believe truth is true or that it's knowable is a minority viewpoint. Okay? And that would have serious consequences for evangelism, discipleship, and following the Lord, wouldn't it? So belief begins with truth. Here are some questions. Is truth knowable? Do you consider some beliefs false? Are your beliefs true? Is religious knowledge different than other types of knowledge? Without truth, without there being such a thing as truth, without truth being knowable, there can be no meaningful discussion about anything. Now, I'm going to tell you right up front, I was thinking about this uh, study all afternoon, and I'm excited to share this with you. Um, there's some humorous things. When you really dig in, you'll see... There's some humorous things. It's like light bulbs go off. You're like, oh, I get it. And I hope that happens here tonight with you as you're uh, tuning in. All right. So truth has an impact. Here's three examples. All right. We've already talked about the existence of God. That was last week. We're going to talk about morality in the Bible in the following two weeks. So that's why we put this discussion of truth right here. After God and before morality in the Bible. And notice the impact that knowing truth and the reality of truth has on this discussion. Either God exists or he does not exist. That's a truth statement. Either you should do something or you should not do something. That's here's the truth. The Bible. Either it is fact or it is fiction. Either the Bible is true or it is false. Whether truth is real and knowable matters. What are the obstacles to getting to the truth? What are the obstacles that we run into when we're trying to have this, these discussions? And let me say something. For many of us, we don't see the importance of this because we're not sharing our faith with other people at work, friends, family. I promise you, if you engage with people, these types of things come up. I shared in my first study in apologetics those years that I worked at Walmart. Specifically, the Walmart in Monroe, North Carolina. So here I was, a guy, I built displays in the Walmart. And I worked with other people who stocked ice cream or milk or swept the floor. I wasn't dealing with people that were in the ivory tower of some university. They were just regular people. And they asked these types of questions. So if you just engage with people, you'll see these types of questions come to the forefront. And we need to be equipped to be able to share our faith. So here are the obstacles of getting to the truth. Agnostic is a big word. It just means someone who says they're agnostic says we cannot know the truth. It's unknowable. Skepticism says all claims to have truth should be doubted. If you say you have the truth, we should doubt that. And relativism, that's the big one. Truth is determined by the individual or society. And then finally, emotionalism. Truth is just determined by how it makes you feel. I would argue that right now, in the day and age in which we live, relativism and emotionalism come together to make a nasty, nasty, um, toxic drink of a false belief of truth. And it's something we need to be aware of when we're having discussions with people so that we can share our faith. So, define truth. What truth is not? So, truth is not pragmatism, which is the idea that truth is what brings about the desired result. So, if it works out to what you want it to be, then it must be true. No, that's not what truth is. It's not subjectivist. Truth is what is relevant to life. No, it's not dependent upon the individual. And it's not hedonistic, which is the philosophy that whatever feels good, do it. So, truth is what feels good. That's not what truth is. That's not what we mean when we're talking about truth. So what are we talking about? What do, you, what do we mean? Well, here's some expressions of those big things we just talked about 
subjectivism and relativism because that still might not be connecting with you. So here's some statements you might hear. You might hear someone say, there is no such thing as truth. Or you can't know truth. Or all truth is relative. Or it's true for you, but not for me. No one has the truth. All truth depends on your perspective. So here's an example. I saw this on a television show last night. Individuals having a conversation, and there was a young man that kept using the phrase, well, this is my truth. This is my truth. Well, what does this statement mean? It means that truth is equal to a favorite kind of ice cream. There's no way to correct. We can disagree with the person's favorite type of ice cream, but we can't say their choice is false. So, I like vanilla, you like chocolate. We can disagree, but you can't say, Josh, you are wrong. You, it is a false statement to say, vanilla ice cream tastes best. But when someone says truth, and they say, my truth, this is just my truth that I believe, and you will hear this everywhere. Just talk to someone. College students, high school students, middle school students, adults. This is everywhere. The music we listen to, the movies we watch. It makes truth this personal thing. And here's where it gets tricky when we're trying to share our faith. If you're out there and you're saying, well, I, Josh, I have, a, I have a truth that's my truth. If something is your personal truth, then how can I share with you that it's wrong? So if someone's personal truth is that there are many ways to God, and I'm saying that no, the truth is that there is only one way to God. If truth is a personal thing, how can I tell that individual, if that's what truth is, that they are wrong? I can't. So you see, I hope, where this discussion of truth goes. Consider the, the great movie from the 90s, A Few Good Men. The classic scene in A Few Good Men. Tom Cruise. He says, I want the truth. And Jack Nicholson says what? You can't handle the truth. Well, both those gentlemen, I guarantee you, Jack Nicholson, I forget, was it, I think it was Colonel Jessup. That was the character thing. Yes. Here he is sitting there, right? Colonel Jessup. He's sitting there on the docket, you know, he's sitting there. I doubt Colonel Jessup was thinking, well, you, uh, Lieutenant Kathy, Kathy, you want your truth, but I have my truth. No way, not a Marine Corps colonel. He was saying, you can't handle the truth. Those men were arguing about something that they both knew. In the movie, it was the code red happening. They both knew it. And that truth was uncomfortable, and that's what... Uh, Jessup, Colonel Jessup, Jack Nicholson's character meant. So even in the movies, we see this idea of truth, and there's a concreteness to it. Now, the answer to these common ways of disputing the idea that truth is knowable or real is to flip it on itself. To flip it on itself. Now, here's what gets kind of humorous, because a lot of times we don't think about this. So the way I was taught in seminary is, it's called the boomerang move. You throw it at someone, it comes back to them. So if someone says the statement, there is no such thing as truth, you apply the statement to itself, and you ask them, is it true that there is no such thing as truth? There are many statements. If someone says, you can't know truth, you ask them, is that a true statement, that you can't know truth? And if it is a true statement, then there's at least one truth you know or all truth is relative. Relative means it depends upon the individual. While well, you ask them, is the statement all truth is relative only dependent upon the individual? And if the statement all truth is relative is just dependent upon you, what exactly are you saying to me? It's true for you, but not for me. Is it true for everyone that it's true for you and not for me? And if so, what are we talking about? No one has the truth. Is that a true statement? And if it is, don't you have truth? The truth that no one has the truth, you see this, and we can kind of chuckle. And it is funny on one level, but on another level, it's not. Because these types of understandings of truth are disastrous for the way people live their lives. We need to have an accurate understanding of truth. It's also disastrous 
When we're talking about the Christian faith, and here's where it applies to our study of apologetics. Moral relativism, and we're going to talk about morality in a few weeks. That is the view that the rightness or wrongness of an action is determined by the individual or society. So one society says it's right to exterminate the Jews. That's in Nazi, Nazi Germany. Another society says it is wrong to exterminate the Jews. This was World War II. When the Nuremberg trials happened, the Nazis, the SS that they put on trial, thought what they were doing was right. They did not think what they were doing was wrong. In our movies, the villains always are sitting there, <laughs> and they're plotting to do wrong. In real life, people do things that we consider, and everyone considers, to be morally wrong, oftentimes think what they're doing is right. Yet, civilized world condemned, and rightly so, condemned what the Nazis had done. But if truth is relative and it impacts morality, you see the problem. Or just in a very practical way, if a child cheats, students cheat, plagiarism at school, and they're caught, what if they say, well, for you, professor, or Mr. Smith, or Mrs. Smith, it is wrong to cheat. But my truth says it is not wrong to cheat. Do you think the teacher, the professor at the school is going to buy that? Nope. Big fat F. Okay? But we see where it impacts. And then religious pluralism. We're claiming in our apologetic study that Christianity is true, and there are reasons why it is true. But if there's no such thing as truth, we're in a big mess. Because religious pluralism, which we've already alluded to, says that all religions are equally true and valid expressions. Here's a quote, an example from a galaxy far, far away of religious pluralism. Now, I know there are many Star Wars fans in our church, and I enjoy Star Wars too, but you see this view all throughout Star Wars, but here's what George Lucas had to say about religion, and it's true. He says, I remember when I was 10 years old, I asked my mother, if there's only one God, why are there so many religions? The conclusion I've come to is that all religions are true. All religions are true. Now, if he defines truth in the subjective way or the relativistic way that we've talked about, okay, but that's not what truth means. We've said, John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. So if one religion says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and another religion says Jesus is not the way, the truth, and the life, can both of those religions be true? No, they cannot both be true. One is true, and if one is false, or they both are false, but they both can't be true because they contradict one another. So here's a great illustration of religious pluralism. It's called, it's the parable of the six blind men and the elephant. Now, uh, when our administrative assistant, Amy, was putting this together, and again, thank you, Amy. She's doing a fantastic job of working with my crazy slides and making them suitable for public consumption each Wednesday night. Uh, she came to this slide. She, she, she wasn't familiar with this, and I mentioned to her in a student ministry, previous student ministry, I had young people in late middle school and early high school who were taught this parable as a way to think about religion in their school. All right, in their social studies class. So here it is. This is how the world thinks about religion and its relationship to truth. And we'll move quickly through it. So you have six blind men, they come up to an elephant. And one interacts with the ear of the elephant, and he says, this must be a fan. And another impacts with the, uh, the side of the elephant, and he says, this must be a wall. And another grabs the tail and says, well, this must be a rope. And the fourth interacts with the leg and says, well, this must be a tree. And one grabs a tusk and says, this is obviously a spear. And then another grabs the trunk and says, this is obviously a snake. You have these six blind men, and they interact with an elephant. And they each experience the elephant in different ways. Well, religious pluralism says each of these men's experience is valid. 
But, see, these are the religions there. It's all just the same. But I hope you see the flaw in this parable. What is this? It's one thing for six blind men to conclude six different things, but what would the person who could see say that was? It's an elephant. It's an elephant. The blind men are blind, so they're obviously not seeing reality. And that's what truth is. Here's a C.S. Lewis quote. We are now getting to the point at which different beliefs about the universe lead to different behavior. Religion involves a series of statements about facts, not feelings, which must be either true or false. Either Jesus rose from the dead or he didn't. If they are true, one set of conclusions will follow about the right sailing of the human fleet. If they are false, quite a different set. Do you see why it's so important that we understand what truth is? So what is truth? We've gone through all this. And you're saying, okay, Josh, that's fine and dandy, but you've asked at the beginning of our study what is truth, and you've gone through telling us what truth is not and all the flaws in our current understanding of truth, so what is truth? We come to it now. Truth is that which corresponds to reality. Think back to our elephant illustration. Why is it true that that is an elephant? Because that is an elephant. You see it, and there it is. Why is it false? The views the six blind men came to. Because they were blind, they didn't see the way things really were. And so a simple way you can say truth is telling it like it is. Telling it like it is. Why is the statement, this is a car, true? Because it matches the other. If I say, this is a remote, why is that true? Because that's a remote. Now, we maybe some of you are smiling and thinking, what is he talking about? I'm telling you, there are whole belief systems, music. I could go through music and says, listen, you know, listen to your heart. It's all subjective. Let your heart guide you. Whatever you feel, let it guide you. All of these things. But what if what you feel is false? We don't let falsehood guide us in other areas of life. Opposites cannot both be true and false at the same time in the same sense. Again, think, either Jesus rose from the dead or he didn't. It can't be the case that Jesus both rose from the dead and didn't rise from the dead. Either it happened or it didn't. Truth is narrow by definition. People will say, well, it's narrow to say that about religion. Well, if it's, if it's true, if Christianity is true, truth is narrow by definition. Two plus two equals four. Although, if you go on Twitter, two plus two equals five, or whatever you feel like it should be at the given moment. Until someone goes to their bank account and they want their paycheck to be accurate reflection. They don't want their boss to have a relativist view of truth that says, well, for me, two plus two equals one. So I'm paying you one dollar instead of four dollars. No one lives that way. So here's some examples. Truth is knowable. Truth is absolute. Now, that is really controversial. What I mean is there are things that are true for every person in every place at every time. That's controversial to some. And I, if you have any questions about this, reach out to me on Facebook or here on the channel, or contact me here at the church. I would like to discuss that further with you. Remember, we're just kind of flying over. Here's the reality. We expect truth. We expect when the doctor or the banker, and I know even down here about advertising, what do we all assume about advertising? That it's false. And we get mad when they say it's buy one, get one, or they say you're going to have a certain percentage off, and you go and it doesn't exactly match up to the ad. We get mad. Why? Because we demand accuracy. We demand truth in our directions. In the early days of GPS, what would the GPS do? It would send us in the wrong direction, and we'd get mad. We wouldn't say, well, truth is relative. No, we demand truth and accuracy in directions in our relationships with my dear wife. When she says to me, I love you, or she says to me, when we got married 20 years ago, I promise to, I expect and demand that to be true, what she's saying. And in our judicial system, we demand truth and accuracy. So the question is, if we demand truth in all of those things, why do we treat religion differently? Why do we treat it differently? Summing up the truth about truth. Truth is discovered, not invented. 
We hold these truths to be self-evident. What was Thomas Jefferson saying in the Declaration of Independence? He was saying these are truths that government doesn't make up or societies don't make up. These are things that are just built into the, they're, they're baked in the cake of life. Truth is discovered, not invented. Truth is transcultural. Truth is unchanging, even though our beliefs about truth are not. Truth is not subject to sincerity. You can be sincerely wrong. Truth is not affected by the attitude of the communicator. I could be a poor communicator, and maybe some of you think I am, and maybe I am. But when I read John 14, 6, whether I read it with joy and enthusiasm or like a dead fish, it's still true. And all truth is absolute, absolute, even truth that appears relative. I close with this answer uh, before we look at Winston, Winston Churchill's quote. So some will say, truth is relative. And they'll give an example of religious truth being relative. And this example comes from, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist, a book by Norm Geisler and Frank Kirk. And the illustration goes like this. You say, truth is relative. Religious truth is relative. Well, what do you mean? Well, in India, they believe it's a truth statement that you shouldn't eat cows. And in America, or in Christian nations, we believe it's true that you can eat cows. There you go. See? Truth is relative. Well, you start digging a little deeper. Why don't the Indians, the Hindus, eat cows? Because they believe that they might possibly be they're reincarnated relative. So actually what the Indian believe is it's wrong or a true statement to not eat your relative. And guess what we believe in America? It's wrong to eat your relative. So we all agree that it's wrong to eat your relative. See, when you look deeper, truth comes out. And that leads us to the Winston Churchill statement. The truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it. Ignorance may deride it. But in the end, there it is. There it is. Ultimately, the truth of Jesus Christ. John 14, 6. I've said it, and I don't know, this might be the fourth or fifth time. I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. You know, at the beginning I said truth is knowable. It is knowable. Truth ultimately is not a statement, but it's a person. And you can know that truth. You can know the person of Jesus Christ. And so if you're tuning in to these lessons on apologetics here at Adventist Creek Missionary Baptist Church or our Facebook page, you just kind of stumbled upon it, or you are regularly tuning in and you're confused, maybe it's because your mind's clouded because you've never put your faith in the person who is truth, Jesus Christ. And we would encourage you to do that. Repent of your sin and put your trust in him. And if you've done that, would you reach out to us here at the church so we can pray for you? And then for those Christians, I hope you'll think about this stuff. Go back and watch these videos. It, I want to, if I could, I'd give you homework. I'd say in the next week, the TV shows and the music you listen to, see if you pick up on the false views of truth and share those with me. So maybe do that. And if you see me someday, share some that you I picked up on. Trust me, they're all over the place. But until then, I hope to see you Sunday, 11 a.m. And remember, there is truth. We can know it. His name is Jesus.